My name is Dave Wilcoxon. I'm a uh, senior product manager at Precision Planting in Tremont, Illinois, in the United States. And so I'm responsible for the uh, architecture, basically, of our C++ software platform. We were founded about 30 years ago, really with a mission to kind of help farmers by developing hardware and software technologies that really improve the performance and yield of their uh, existing equipment and really ultimately kind of help to feed the world. And so we really view ourselves as like a, uh, a disruptive force in agriculture. So a lot of us in the engineering organization, we really came from larger companies and we kind of saw the bureaucracy that sort of like naturally develops over time in those organizations. And so really we tried to like remove all that here and really create like a, a culture of trust and accountability where engineers really have the tools they need to do their jobs, kind of iterate quickly and uh, fail fast. The cornerstone, I guess, of our, our software offering is really our in-cab display, which we call the 2020. And so it's a uh, 10 and a half inch touchscreen that really gives farmers insight into the performance of their equipment during planting and harvest. And so it handles like telematics and does near real-time command and control of all of the embedded microcontrollers that run on our mechanical products that are out actually putting uh, crop into the ground. Our development environment is actually uh, currently based on uh, Qt 6.4. And so uh, we migrated from, uh, I think, 5.15 to 6.2 at the beginning of the year. And um, our, so our software heavily relies on mapping. And so the lack of Qt location in 6.2 was kind of a big deal for us. But we actually took a look at things and we decided that it was more important to have the improved CMake support, like the better QML compilation, and the better C++ 17 support in Q6. So we kind of decided to use that opportunity to actually rewrite our um, our mapping code that was based on Q location um, into our own in-house code that was actually kind of more integrated into our graphics pipeline. So we were still able to get all the benefits of going to QT6. Yeah, you know, we looked at using like uh, HTML5 and some of the JavaScript frameworks that are out there to make kind of like a a browser-based interface, but uh, ultimately we really didn't think that we could provide like kind of seamless integration to the rest of our code um, with that path. And then fundamentally, um, our company, I guess, kind of has a long history of being a C++ shop. And so it was honestly kind of an easier step for us to go to something like Qt than to totally change the game and kind of go to a JavaScript um, or HTML-based system. When we started making the current version of the 2020, uh, we had about 10 months from the time that we started hiring the team um, until our first customer um, ran a beta to actually plant uh, plant product with. And I honestly don't think that would have been possible without us being able to um, leverage QML for doing our user interface. Uh, I, I really like how, how efficient, like, I guess Qt has made our whole team. And so, you know, it's been very power, powerful for us to be able to uh, basically um, really truly kind of write product once and then um, run it everywhere. And so we have developers that are based on Mac, they're based on Windows, um, they're based on Linux, um, but all those people are able to write code basically knowing that it's going to run on the target hardware. And so that's been very powerful for us where you know, our engineers are actually able to use the tools that they're most productive in to deliver product.